Our goal for today is to talk about quadric surfaces. And those are surfaces which are involving equations which have degree two. In some sense, we know how to handle equations that have degree one. Those are called planes. You know, ax plus by plus c is equals d. So now we're going to degree two, and we're going to get things which are more interesting. And so we'll also see that there are nice generalizations of curves from two dimensions. Now, our real goal is just to start building up our intuition and to also see a nice collection of surfaces, which we'll refer to later as we go further into the course. Well, let's begin. So we're going to start with the conic sections. So this is what happens in 2D, and there's more or less three that we want to talk about. There's the ellipse, which is sort of like a circle, but where you stretch it in one of the two directions. So x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared equals 1. We're not going to spend a lot of time worrying about what is a and b in our discussion today, but essentially, if, in case you're wondering, a is how far we stretch in one direction, and b is how far we stretch in the other direction. So if you see a and b, that's oftentimes like, you think of it as a stretching in one direction or another. A parabola, y equals a constant x squared, and a hyperbola, x squared over a squared minus y squared over b squared equals 1, or you could do y squared over b squared minus x squared over a squared equals 1. So these are our conic sections, and they are the curves that tend to happen whenever you have an equation that involves degree 2. Now, of course, this leads to two possible questions. First question, why are we calling these conic sections? What is that referring to? All right, well, let's answer that one, because that one's not so bad. So what we'll do is we start by drawing a cone. So the word conic is meaning you start with a cone. So we have a cone. So here's a cone. Whew. Whew. All right. Now, the section is referring to cross sections. How do you slice your cone? And depending upon how you slice your cone, you'll get a different behavior. So for instance, you can slice your cone with a plane, and you get Maybe you'll do this kind of slice, so slicing at a little bit of an angle, and what will you see? Well, what you'll see here is something that looks very round. And it turns out that that slice is an ellipse. Now, if you happen to slice it exactly perpendicular to the center of your cone, the ellipse becomes a circle, but in general, you get an ellipse. So, okay, that's great. Well, what's a different way to slice? Okay, let's slice a different way. Another way you could slice is you can imagine taking a slice, something like this. All right, now, you slice, what do you get? Well, when you intersect, what you end up seeing is something that looks roughly like the following. You see these pair of curves, and those curves, those are hyperbolas. All right, so that's not so bad, but where's the parabola slice? Okay, now this one's a little bit interesting. If you think of this almost like a line, what we want to do is more or less slice perpendicular to that. Okay, sorry, not perpendicular, parallel. All right, so if we slice, in this way, and uh, what will end up happening is the shape, you see, it won't have two parts, it only have one part. But it doesn't close up because it's just going to keep going and hanging forever. And what we see here emerging is the parabola. So that's why we call it the conic sections, because it's the different cross sections that you can get by slicing a cone. Okay, that was the first question. Now, the second question says, is this really everything you can get? Okay, well, that's a little bit more subtle. And the answer is kind of. So I want to be clear about what I mean by kind of. 
you might consider a line as a conic section. So for example, you can imagine moving this so that it just literally touches right there at that part, you know, just right along the edge. All right, well, sure, technically, yeah. But more importantly, what about an equation such as the following? x, y equals 1. Is that a conic section? And if it is, which one is it? All right, well, let's think about it. If you plot x, y equals 1, what do you see? Now, another way to think about x, y equals 1 is it's the curve y equals 1 over x. And so that's not so hard. We can graph y equals 1 over x. That looks something more or less like that. And now, here's the thing. I claim that it's a hyperbola. And it is a hyperbola. So what you have to do is you have to turn it. So forgive me for a second while I turn this. If you turn the page, what you see is that if you look at it in this way, it looks like a hyperbola. Now, what do I mean by look at it this way? Well, essentially what I'm saying is change your coordinate system. So instead of having our coordinates in this fashion, you can imagine that we put a new coordinate system in place that does something like this. And now all of a sudden, this is like, ah, yes, that is the picture of a hyperbola. So when we say these are the conic sections, what we really mean is up to some rigid transformation. In other words, moving things around and rotating, those are the rigid transformations. Every single conic section that involves expressions involving squares or two things multiplying together can be written in one of these ways. Another way to think of it is by choosing a good coordinate system. So instead of moving things around to be in the right place, you can say, ah, no, no, don't move anything. Just change your coordinates so that the coordinates are in the right place. Then we can get our conic sections to show up. So that's 2D. So we're going to go and talk about 3D. Now, the same type of thing happens. Namely, there's lots of ways you can combine things which, you know, squares and not just squares, but things like x, y. But by appropriately choosing your coordinate system, or if you like, by appropriately translating all our, our quadric surfaces, what we're going to talk about, are one of the following. So let's just go, go through them. Now, I should pause and say, how are we going to understand them? And uh, the answer is we're going to look at cross sections. So, you can imagine we have some surface here, and sometimes it's hard to figure out what's happening. But you say, look, no problem. Let's start by saying, what happens if you slice? So you look here, it looks kind of like an upside down bowl. It turns out it actually is like an upside down bowl. And uh, what we're doing is we're slicing at different heights. And so by slicing at different heights, we can get an idea of what's happening. It's similar to the way that uh, some medical diagnostic machines work, where they're like, well, we don't want to, you know, open up your head to take a look at your brain. So what we can do is get an image of what your, your brain looks like on the inside, but we do it one slice at a time. And then by connecting the slices together, we can have a pretty good idea of what's happening in your head. So there we go. We say, look, What's happening? Well, we're seeing circles as we move along. And so by understanding that those are our shapes, that can help us figure out our behavior. So when we don't know off the top of our head what something looks like, we start saying, let's look at our cross sections. Let's see what those look like. And then we can start to say, oh, we see a shape emerging. OK, here's what the shape looks like. So our first one. Here we go. Z squared is x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared. OK, what is it? Well, that's our goal. We've got to figure that out. So we've got to think about what do our cross sections look like. And when we say cross sections, we really say, well, we're going to fix a variable. That's a cross section. Fix z or fix x or fix y. 
Now, one of the things that we could do is, uh, let's suppose we look at our picture by setting x equals 0. So, in terms of our diagram here, it's like we're going to slice down. Or, if you like, we're saying, hey, there's this surface. What is it doing when we look at it in the zy plane? So, if we set x equals 0, what happens? We see z squared is y squared over b squared. For convenience, we'll set a equals b equals 1 at the start. At the end, we'll talk about what's happening when you vary a and b. So, okay, that's not so bad. If you take the square root of both sides, what do you get? And it's not z equals y. Okay, so if you take the square root of both sides, you get the absolute value of z equals the absolute value of y. And that tells us that our shape, when we slice this way, looks like this. It looks like the absolute value function on the top and the absolute value function on the bottom. So that's one slice. And that's not, that's a good start, okay? So we know what it looks like when we slice, we set x equals zero. What if for a second we say, okay, let's fix our values for z. What does it look like? Well, what we see is, so let's just fix z. And what happens is we get x squared plus y squared equals z squared. Okay, it's the same equation, but notice if we think of z as fixed, that says, ah, this is a circle of radius z. So, what's happening? Well, so for instance, well technically I should say absolute value of z. For instance, if I come up and I say, look, I'm going to move not at the xy plane, so at the xy plane, what we'd see is we just see a circle of radius 0, single point. If we move up a little bit, we say, okay, so if I move up to z equals 1, so move up, then what happens is I see a circle of radius 1, so I'll see a circle. If I move up a little bit further, I'll see a, a bigger circle. And indeed, as I move along, my circles just get bigger and bigger as I move out. So we say, ah, we see our shape emerging here. Lo and behold, we see, now we get it. What's happening here? Well, this is a shape that we've seen. This is the cone. So that's our quadric surface that we've just discovered. And so the key was saying, oh, look, when I look at my cross section where I vary z, it circles. And if you think about the rate at which the circles expand, in some sense you could say, well, initially it's a single point, but then it grows at the same rate as you go up. So it's going to go at a nice steady pace. So that's what's happening to our circles. And so there we go. That's our, our basic shape. Cool. Now, you might be saying, okay, well, what about different cross-sections? Well, we already know that different cross-sections can lead to all sorts of different behavior. We've talked about uh, if you fix a value for x other than zero, what will you get? Well, you're going to get hyperbolas because we're going to be back into our conic sections. But actually, if you think about what happens, if you take a cross-section of any quadric surface, what you're going to get is you're going to get back into a conic section. It'll always be the case that that's going to be what happens. So in essence, we shouldn't be surprised that we're seeing our conic sections emerge as we look at our quadric surfaces here. So, all right, so now we have cones. What happens as you change A and B? Well, essentially, you can think of it as, as I change A, it's like I'm stretching in the X direction by a factor of A. If I change B, I'm stretching the Y direction by a factor of B. So that's what happens. So instead of having circles coming up, what you'd have is you'd have ellipses coming up. And so that's the difference. Most of the time, and I will say this is a surface we're going to do plenty of examples with in the future, most of the time we have A equals B equals 1. All right. On to our next one. So, x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared plus c squared over c squared equals 1. And again, think of a, b, and c as saying stretching in different directions. So, it's sufficient for us to say, 
let's just focus on things where A and B and C are one to get into a picture. Of course, in this case, we probably don't even have to do that. Let's think about our, our cross sections, and we're going to be really simple and think about what happens. So let's start with x equals 0. What do you see? Well, you get y squared over b squared plus z squared over c squared equals 1. All right. Well, that says when I slice, I'm going to sit and I'm going to end up with an ellipse. Aha! So slicing, where I'm perpendicular to the x-axis, and particular x equals 0, I see that my shape coming out is an ellipse. Now, what if we do something similar, but y equals 0? Okay, so if we do y equals 0, that becomes x squared over a squared plus z squared over c squared equals 1. What's that? It's also an ellipse, but instead of going this way, now we're going that way. So it's sort of an ellipse in a perpendicular direction. So it's in the xz plane. So there we go. Now, one more. Might as well finish up. What's the other direction we could go? Well, our other direction we can go is we could set z equals 0. So if we set z equals 0, what happens? Well, x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared equals 1. Again, it's an ellipse. And lo and behold, we're, we start to see, hey, there's a nice shape that's emerging here. I'm seeing ellipses every time I take a cross section. And indeed, what will happen is if you vary things, so for instance, if you vary y, we can think of it as saying, really, move this over to the other side, y squared over b squared. So at y equals 0, you get a big ellipse, but then the ellipse starts to shrink as you move towards the end. And if you move far enough, you could say, you know, say y was bigger than b, then you have x squared plus c squared equals a negative number, forget it, hopeless, hopeless. So what we're forming here is something that looks a little bit like an M&M. &M. And where all the cross sections that are interesting are ellipses. All right. Or you could, now when I say are interesting, but what's an uninteresting cross section? That's what I was referring to a moment ago. You see, if you take a cross section way out here, it's sort of the empty cross section. That just says, look, our surface doesn't go over there. Well, that's okay. Sometimes surfaces don't go everywhere. So this would be the three-dimensional version of an ellipse. What should we call it? Well, hmm, we will call it an ellipse void. So that'll actually be a very common thing that happens. We say, hey, this is like a three-dimensional version of something. Okay, let's call it the somethingoid. So, all right, that's very suggestive. Just keep that in mind as we keep moving forward and doing more examples. All right, well, how about our next one? x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared minus z squared over c squared equals 1. What does that look like? Well, you can think of it, say, okay, what happens? Let's think about it as uh, our, our three planes, right? Set so x equals 0, y equals 0, z equals 0. And we'll just see what we see. Now, when we set x equals 0, we say, hey, that looks like y squared minus z squared equals 1. Now, that's a hyperbola. Okay, now here's the thing about hyperbolas. You have to be a little bit careful because there's sort of like two kinds of hyperbolas, right? There's the hyperbolas that open sideways, and then there's the hyperbolas that open up and down. Let's see if I can do ah. I feel like this is harder than it looks. Okay, so the question is, all right, which kind do I have? Do I have sideways opening hyperbolas or up and down opening hyperbolas? Well, one way you can think about it is uh, notice if I can choose, I can choose z equals 0, and I still get a solution. 
because if I choose z equals 0, y squared equals 1 works. So I say, okay, I can definitely hit those points there, y equals plus 1 minus 1 in the yz plane. If I chose y equals 0, hopeless, hopeless. And so I see, look, I know I have to hit those points. Those are on the, the side. So these are sideways opening hyperbolas. So that uh, says we're going to be doing something. Whoop, very big point. That uh, says we're going to be doing something like that. All right. Now, a similar thing, by the way, will happen if you choose y equals 0. If you choose y equals 0, what do you see? Well, you're going to get x squared minus z squared equals 1. And so, similar thought process. We say, okay, in the back and in the front. Now, what's the last thing? Well, what about z equals 0? Well, for z equals 0, you see a nice circle. You get x squared plus y squared equals 1. So I say, aha, we get this nice circle forming here in the xy plane. And now, in fact, think about what can happen. Really, we can say, we can think of it as x squared plus y squared is 1 plus z squared. So if we fix our value for z, we say, well, we're going to always see a circle. It's x squared plus y squared equals something. What's happening to our circle? Well, at z equals 0, circle radius 1. As we go further up or down, our radius is going to get bigger. So it's going to get bigger if we go up and down. So we start to see some nice shape emerging where we are going to see circles. And as we move up and down, they get smaller and bigger. So this shape, let me redraw it because, of course, we're going to get a little bit more complicated here. Looks like this. If you're familiar with uh, nuclear power plants, the, you might say, oh, it kind of looks like part of the nuclear power plant, the cooling towers. Uh, sometimes this would have been referred to as the hourglass, and uh, I don't know if many people refer to that as the hourglass shape anymore. Um, but what are we going to call it? Well, think about the cross sections. What cross sections do we see? Well, we see circles and hyperbolas. So we say, okay, so it's kind of acting like a hyperbola, so we'll call it a hyperboloid. So that's a step up from a hyperbola. You're probably suspicious here. We'll get into that. So, all right. So yeah, in general, once you understand the cross sections, that really gives the game away. If you go back through and look, you say, look, here, all our cross sections for the ellipsoid were ellipses. Okay, what happens here? Well, our cross sections tend to be circles. And uh, so that's what happened. So look at cross sections. Cross sections give away what's going on. Okay, why that? Hmm, hmm. Let's look at something else. Minus x squared over a squared minus y squared over b squared plus c squared over c squared equals 1. Now, what's the difference? Well, essentially, if you look, we've changed the signs. Okay, does that change the shape? Yeah, it's going to change the shape. What happens? Well, let's think about it. If we set our x equals 0, similar to where we were before, what do you see? Well, you get minus y squared plus z squared equals 1. Now, in that case, see, previously we were opening sideways. Now, where do we do? Where do we open? We are going to open down and up. So, that's what's happening in the yz plane. Well, what about y equals 0? y equals 0, same process. Minus x squared plus z squared equals 1. So what's going to happen is we're, again, going to be here, and we're going to be a hyperbola opening up. Now, what about z equals 0? Okay, z equals 0 says what? Minus x squared minus y squared equals 1. 
which means we never hit the xy plane. So one of the things we see right away is that this surface is very different because there's a part upstairs and there's a part downstairs and never the two shall meet because there's this xy plane. We cannot cross through it. Now, more generally, here's what we can do. If we start with this equation, we can say, well, if we rearrange our terms, so let's move the x squared and the y squared across and the one across, we really say, look, it looks like x squared plus y squared is equal to uh, z squared minus one. There we go. Now, what does that tell us? Well, when is the first thing we can have any points? Well, we have to have this has to be at least zero. So when we hit z equals one, x squared plus y squared equals zero, it's just those points right there. And now as z continues to go up, we start seeing circles. x squared plus y squared equals a number is a circle. So as we're moving up and down, in the middle there's nothing until all of a sudden, doop, a single point, and then whoop, circles from there on out. So that our cross sections start to look like circles and so forth and so on, up and down. So that's the shape that emerges. So clean it up, we're gonna see our shape looks something like this. So there's our shape. Now, what kind of cross sections do we see? Hyperbolas and circles, similar as before. So, what do we call it? Well, we are also going to call this a hyperboloid. All right. But now we say, hey, hold on. There's something very different here between this kind of hyperboloid and the other kind of hyperboloid. You see, in this hyperboloid, we have two different pieces. Well, if we go back to the previous one, we had a single piece. In other words, I can get from one point on my surface to any other point on my surface that I want. So we should distinguish these. So how do we distinguish them? So the way we do it is we say, all right, so this original hyperboloid, we're gonna call this a hyperboloid, and uh, I'll change my color here for just a second, of one sheet. And that's just to emphasize there's one part to it. Everything is in one piece. Ah, this is actually a really interesting shape, by the way. Very interesting shape. But Well, we'll do lots of examples with it, to be sure. In this one, we say, okay, this is also hyperboloid, but we'll say of two sheets. And so that's just a way of saying there's really two parts here. Okay, so there we go. Those are hyperboloids. Now, a few more. Here is our next one. You'll notice this one is a little bit different. What do you see? Well, the z isn't being squared. It's just a normal z. Well, hmm, what is that going to do? Think of the cross sections. So we run through them. x equals 0. What do you see? Well, that says z equals y squared. So you see, all right. Z so equals y squared. It looks something like that. If you do y equals 0, what do you see there? Well, if you do y equals 0, you're going to see that we have z equals x squared. Okay, so that's going to come along here and do something like that. Now, what happens with z? Well, with z equals 0, not very exciting. At z equals 0, you get... 0 equals x squared plus y squared. Well, that's nothing. That's just a single point. That's that point right there. But, in general, if we think about what happens if we set z equals a number. So, in other words, we're, instead of just at the xy plane, we're going to start moving up and saying, look at the cross sections. Look at the cross sections. So, at x squared plus y squared equals a number, we're going to see circles. Circles and circles and circles. At least as long as z is positive. If we push down and say, what about z negative? We say, there's nothing there. x squared plus y squared can't be a negative value. So what's going to end up happening is that our cross sections are going to become circles. 
And we say, okay, so that's the shape that's emerging. All right, so our shape looks something like this. Now, this has sort of an informal name. I, I like to call this a bowl. And because it kind of looks like a bowl. So that's why I like to call it the bowl. That's a pretty good reason. Now, what's the fancy name? What are the cross sections that are emerging? Well, what we see is our main cross sections over here are parabolas. That's a little bit different. We haven't seen those before. So because our cross sections are showing up as parabolas, we say, all right, this will be called a paraboloid. All right. And there we go. And now you're like, hey, there's a big space again. We'll get to that. Okay. So now let's look at another one. So z equals minus x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared. What's going to happen here? Well, again, we run through our process. And by now, you're like, hey, I know the process. Let's just start setting values equal to 0 and see what happens. x equals 0 we're still going to see z equals y squared. Okay, same as before. Perfect, perfect. So that's what our shape is. Now, what happens if we go out and we said, all right, set y equals 0. Now, here, things get interesting because we're going to still have a parabola, but now it's going to open down. So, our parabola is doing that. So there's our other parabola. And now it's all of a sudden our reaction is, huh, hmm, huh. What's going on? Well, let's think about other slices because this might help us. So suppose this at y equals zero. See, I have minus x squared and then there's really a hidden plus y squared, right? Because that's our or y equals 0. If I moved over and I slice at y equals 1, what would happen? Well, if y equals 1, I'd have minus x squared plus 1, which means it's the same parabola, just shifted up. So over here, moved over slightly, it has that shape. And of course, if I had gone to y equals negative 1, similar thing happening on the other side. Okay? So what I see is I when I move my cross-sections along, I'm seeing these upside-down parabolas. But of course, they're, they're, the top is moving up and down. Now, on the other hand, if I came back to the x equals 0, and I said, OK, well, z equals y squared, but it's really y squared minus x squared, right? And so, if I start moving, what do I see? Well, I'm going to see a parabola, and what's going to happen is that I'm going to shift down. So, so it's like I have this parabola, and it's going to do like this. So, for instance, I'm going to come down over here, and then on the back, similar thing happening back there. So, what shape is starting to emerge? Hmm. Well, here's a, a representation of it. It's a little bit easier to perhaps see it. It looks something like the following shape where we have this basic shape coming up. So that's, that's our shape, that's emerging, that's the surface. And you can see in one direction we have these upward opening parabolas, and then we, as we move along, it, it sort of drops down on both sides. And then in the other direction, we have these downward facing parabolas, but you, you look at where, what happens to the peaks and they do something like that. If you've ever gone hiking in mountains, you might have heard of something called a mountain pass. And this is essentially what you're looking for, where you know, you're going between two mountains and you want to find the low point between the two mountains to cross over. This actually has another name. It's kind of a, a fun name. It's called the saddle. Well, why do we call it a saddle? If you think about what a, a, a saddle is, now when we think of a saddle, 
times we often think of a horse. So if you were to, to sketch a saddle, you'll see that a saddle tends to have a shape that looks something like that. And uh, so that you can sit there. So let's see, we'll, we'll try to I'm, I should warn you, uh, I'm not an artist, but anyways. So the saddle that you see on, on a horse is, is very similar here in that if you look at the shape the, where you sit, it's, it has this curved shape, but it also then goes down on the sides. So that's why it's also known as the saddle. Okay, well... What do we call it? What are our, our really important cross sections? The important cross sections are parabolas. So if we start thinking about, well, if we're going to give this a name, we're going to have to give it a name that really emphasizes the fact that it's a parabola and a cross section. So it's also called a paraboloid. All right. So now you see our, our quandary. We have two types of paraboloids, and they're very different the bowl versus the saddle. So how do we choose what to call it? Well, the key is, let's think of the other cross sections. So if you come here, back to our previous one, what were our cross sections? Our cross sections were circles in the very case where simple case A equals B equals one. In general, they're going to be ellipses. So when we're looking for a name, to specify, we will call it an elliptic paraboloid because it says, hey, it's a paraboloid where the other cross sections are ellipses. But to be honest with you, I will probably always call things a bowl. So, and these are going to be really important. The, the bowl and the saddle are like the two most important surfaces that we talk about today. So if you only remember two surfaces from today, those are the two. Now here, what are our cross sections that we see? Well, we didn't really talk about them much, but notice what do you have? We have minus x squared plus y squared equals some number. This is when you, you have a fixed value for z. So what is this? Well, this is a hyperbola. You say, okay, so now instead of having our cross sections be ellipses, they're hyperbola, so we're going to call this a hyperbolic paraboloid. But I would say by far the more common name is the saddle. And if you say saddle, people will know exactly what you mean. And it's also a lot easier to spell saddle than it is to spell hyperbolic paraboloid. So so those, those are our two most important surfaces from today. Not our last one. We'll do one more. But our most important ones. Uh, we're going to have a lot of fun with those. Okay, our last one. Now, x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared equals 1. Now you're probably thinking, you made a mistake. That's, that's not a three-dimensional thing. There's only two variables. There's only x and y. Ha! Steve, silly you. But actually, this is meant to be a three-dimensional shape. Now, if I didn't tell you it was three dimensions, you'd say, Steve, that's an ellipse. Or if you like, that's a circle. It's in the xy plane. You're, and you're, you're right, it is a circle in the xy plane. So what's happening is when you say it's a circle in the xy plane, you're saying, I know a cross section. Because z equals 0 is the xy plane. But now I say, let's choose a different value for z. z equals 1. What happens? And the answer is, well, what do you mean what happens? It's still the same equation. Because z does not show up. So regardless of which slice I take for z, I'm still going to get the same shape. So it's like I took the circle and I just copy it, the same shape, up and down all the way. So we get this shape emerging. And this has a nice name. It's called the cylinder. So that's what we see. Now this is a common theme. Now, some books choose to adapt the convention that cylinder, you can think of this as sort of a missing variable. In other words, 
look, I'm in three dimensions, but I only see two of the variables present. And therefore, I'm going to do what? Well, what it means is you can sketch it fairly simple. So let's do a quick example. We'll just make one up really fast here. So suppose I said z equals sine y. All right, that's not so bad. We can do that. If we talk about z equals sine y, well, if we think of this here as y and z, we say, well, that's easy. That's just a sine curve. And you just move along. But now I said, look, z equals sine y, but this is in three dimensions. So what does that mean? Well, that means that there's this third direction here called x. And now, what do you do? Well, the answer is, you're just going to translate this same curve, z equals sine y, back and forth. So that you're going to have the following situation. If you look, you have just this rolling piece of paper. So it's whatever, whatever was at the beginning, now it's just always constant. So in other words, for every value of x, you see the exact same thing. So that's how you handle anything if there's a missing variable. It doesn't mean you're back in two dimensions. It means, hey, just make copies of, of that, whatever that curve is back and forth, and that gives you the whole shape. For what we normally think of as cylinders, and when we say cylinders, you should think of this as the picture. So when we think of cylinders, it's just like, oh, you start with the circle, copy it up and down, and then you're good to go. All right, so the, here we go. These are a collection of surfaces. We're going to be seeing them many times, especially, again, the ball and the saddle. That's going to be a really important discussion when we start getting into sort of understanding local behavior of surfaces, which is to come. We're going there. It's going to be good. But for now, we're done for today. So hope you have a great day. Bye.